we are about two weeks out from the AP Chem exam, so let's talk about how to pass it. First of all, you're going to use three sig figs on any and every single answer. There's a one sig fig tolerance. Most numbers are going to have between two and four. Three is always a safe bet. Next up, polarizability is a buzzword, but you can figure this out. The bigger the molecule, the more electrons it has. Therefore, the more polarizable its electron cloud and the stronger its London dispersion forces. When it comes to intermolecular forces, the number of hydrogen bond locations is the reason for a higher boiling point. Let's talk about equilibrium, the 5% rule always applies on the AP exam. Ignore X and don't look back. Also, when it comes to the exam, don't be completely stopped by weird words and images you've never seen before. The whole point of those is to throw you, but you know better. You're just going to read the question, answer the question, and move on. Q and K are going to be very important, and you need to know the distinction between them. You will see titrations. I'm sorry to tell you that if no one else has, be ready for them. And remember that pH equals the pKa at the half equivalence point of a weak acid strong base or weak base strong acid titration. You want to remember that group 1 ions, nitrates, ammonium, and acetates are always soluble. If you remember that, you will have no issues with solubility. And you want to remember those mnemonics for electrochem. Red cat and an ox. Oxidation happens at the anode. Reduction happens at the cathode. Oil rig. Oxidation is lost. Reduction is gain. And the cathode will accumulate mass as the cell operates. If your goal is to get a 5, all you have to do is just mention Coulombic attraction and effective nuclear charge in every single FRQ. Okay, that was a joke, but it is helpful. So follow Chem with Corinne for free, helpful, and non-intimidating AP Chem content like this. Here to help you out this AP season. You've got this.